there are two types of guys women absolutely love. They go crazy over them. And this is the only real battle. This is the battle at the top of the battles. Throughout any time in history, throughout any culture, throughout any race, you're going to see that at the top, you're going to see women love these two guys. So let's get number one. Number one, the number one guy, all women love, all women, everywhere, no respect of class, no respect of any of that shit, is the bad boy. That's right, is the bad boy. In the black community, you want to call him Pookie and Ray Ray. That's what the bad boy would fall in that category. On the other side, it would be, you know, Brad or Chad, pick one. It would be the guy in the leather jacket and the motorcycle with the tattoos, the bad boy. The bad boy is always a archetype. We're talking about archetypes. Women love the bad boy archetype because he represents rebellion. He represents actually pushing against the father and her and the men in her family's control. A father is going to raise his girl up to be nice, prim, proper, respected. He wants somebody to be right for his little princess. And she's going to think about the dude that just talks to her the way she needs to be talked to and screwed the way she needs to be screwed. Shout out to Alan Roger Curry when he talked about I met this judge one time from this upper bourgeoisie family and couldn't figure out why his daughter loved this street dude. Hey, man. He said he fucks, he fucks me the way I need to be. You can't like it or not. This is at the crux of the Pookie Ray Ray argument because women love bad boys. I could give you all the psychological reasons, but that's just the truth. The rebellion, the danger, all of it. And here's the thing. You can lie to yourself and think that that changes some point in life. It doesn't. It doesn't. They just stop talking about it as much. There's never a place where women get to like, well, I went through my bad boy phase and now I want Mr. Rogers. No, that's shit that they tell you guys. They tell you that so you won't feel guilty and won't feel inadequate trying to measure up to the dude she's really thinking about while you on top of her doing the best you can. Shut the front door. That is the truth, the unvarnished truth. They tell you that you're acceptable while she's thinking about the guy she really want while you laying on top of her doing the best you can. But you get that missionary position. You get, you know, the transactional, you know, kind of stuff. And I talked about a video today on how to fix this shit because everybody can't be a bad boy. Everybody can't be a bad boy because you don't want to you don't want to take penitentiary chances. You don't want to you don't you are too law and order. And I'm not judging. See, this is amoral and pragmatic. I don't care if you like it. Everybody can't be the bad boy. You don't want to take those risks. And that's cool. The bad boy is always going to be one of the top bad boy. Think about even back when we had the quintessential all-American show, Happy Days. Who was the most successful character on there? Fonz. Hey. Even in that idyllic, lily white washed America, Richie Potsy, the Cunninghams, Joni Chachi, you know, all-American Al's Burger Shop and Bebop and Poodle Skirts and all that. Who comes up? The leather jacket wearing, motorcycle riding, knock on the door, jukebox work, looks at a girl, come up. I mean, just go back and look at 1970s and look at how look at how cool, how much of a dom game Fonzie was running. Fonzie was running a dom game in the 70s. Fonz was the shit bad boy. That character existed because they knew women would gravitate towards. And here's the thing. Of the nine of you guys who hit dislike, here's why you hit dislike. Because you like them too. You like them too because they do the shit that you don't have balls enough to do. Oh, oh, watch the dislikes go up. Watch it again. You like the bad boys too because they have the balls to do shit that you don't have, that you don't have the balls to do. You wish you could be like them. You wish you could stand up and say, man, fuck you. We're not going to take it. You wish you could do it, but you just can't. You know, people will disapprove of me. I don't want to be like him. I don't want to be a bad boy. I like being Captain America in the Boy Scout because Captain America always wins. No, he doesn't. That's some shit they put on movies to sell you goobers a ticket. Like it or not, bad boys are an archetype for all women. And it's not just black women, all women. You know what happens? The teenage bad boy is different than the 20-something bad boy. is different than 30-something, 40-something, 50-something. But the bad boy stays the bad boy. 
Johnny Depp's character, that bad boy. You you can become a corporate a, a corporate raider, a pirate. See that bad boy can go from high school to Wall Street, and he still has that killer instinct, that shark thing, and he eats up. Bam! And women love him. Now here's the thing. Somebody had to say it. I'm gonna tell you that's what it is. But there's another guy that women love. Again, it's an archetype, and they love this guy just as universally. Even the women that say they don't. And this guy is going to be the more controversial of the ones because this is the guy women actually say they don't dig as much as they really do. They'll come out of their mouth and say, oh, I don't like guys like that. See, the, the, most women will agree out front, yeah, I like bad boys because we know it's more socially acceptable. But this other guy, they'll come out and they're like, I, I mean, you know, some women like him, but I don't like him as much. You know, I, I, I like my guy a different one. And you know what that one is? It's the pretty boy. Yup, the pretty boy, the bad boy and the pretty boy. Now, when I say pretty boy, I'm not talking about delicate features, fingernails. Get that shit out of your head. I'm talking about what somebody, some people call the jawline. Jeremy Meeks, remember that dude? The guy who had the, 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 the went from the mug shot to being a kept man? The jawline with the eyes. Pretty boys. There will be women who be like, I don't like a guy that's that. I don't like a guy that's pretty. I like a guy that's rugged face. And there'll even be guys who are like, man, get bullshit. And I love it. And see, and this is one that guys tend to have a problem with because most men will accept the bad boy because he's, he's masculine and he, you know, when you say pretty boy, it pisses a lot of rock face niggas off because a lot of rock face dudes off because they can't be the pretty boy. Because a pretty boy is a face guy. Don Draper, Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio. See, a lot of times they'll try to paint the pretty boy as some kind of effeminate weakling, and that ain't it. Not even by a long shot. That's what a lot of dudes who really hate on this dude, this archetype, try to paint him as. And that's cool. He's still going to fuck your bitch. Yeah, them rock face dudes get mad at the pretty boys. And they'll be the main ones. Oh, man, you don't need to be a pretty boy. You motherfucking looking like the thing. What you going to tell me? Shut up. Because women like bad boys and pretty boys. Let me give you an example in the black community. How many of you guys went to college? Okay. Well, if you went to college, you know the divine nine. Let's talk about the fraternities. And I, I got to give all five. But the one when I went to school, it was the alphas, the sigmas. The iotas weren't on our yard. But then there was, a, there was the kappa and the Qs. There was the noops and the Qs. I'm a noop. I'm a kappa. The smallest chapters on any yard were always the Kappas and the Qs. We were diametrically opposed. The Qs were the big muscle-bound, you know, uh, Green Mile, Michael Clark Duncan looking Dean Rose. Gonna get some cornbread. You know, the big old swole up dude. Mm. Walk around with the big old mega brand on, walking with the gold boots and they are <laughs> sweating and shit with the Boone's Farm sweat going everywhere, Jerry Curl juice, looking like a bunch of full force motherfuckers, barking at bitches. Rawr! You know, like, hell yeah, and scaring the pussy away. Q's got much play on the yard because there was a big old swole up dude. They played middle linebacker. They even played positions that weren't even out there. The Q's were so big and bad, even the thug dudes like, you don't fuck with them. That's what they were. But then you know who, who will come in? Who will come in? It would be the it would be the noops. The noops would come in and they'd be like, ah oh, man, I don't like them uh you know pretty boys. That's what would happen, man. The cues would go from atomic dog and all this shit, and then we would roll up in there, and women would just go, Oh, the noops, oh, they so sweet. We would come in through the, the, the suspenders and the bow tie, rose, pull out that cane and just start on that smoothed out. With the R and B tip, and the cues would be over there sweating and shit, looking like you know slaves at noonday, and we just yeah, roses are red, violets are blue. But you know what? There was mad respect between the cues and the noops, always. Everywhere I went, mad respect. Every cue I ever met, what's up, noop? And noops only call each other noops. <laughs> and let me tell you something. You know what the respect was? Rodney used to t Rodney. There's a Q named Rod, and he's like, you know what? I don't like them other motherfuckers. I don't like them Sigmas. I don't like the, I, them, them Alphas, and they know I owe this. Like, but I always have respect for you noobs. He's like, we come through, and we gorilla the pussy. We come in, and we just come in. We're going to bark and take it and gorilla it. You cool, but you motherfuckers come in smooth with that shit. 
but y'all lay them down just like we do because you are both predators. Look, man, the pretty boy and the bad boy are always on top.